Hi everyone, Sigrid Soto here. And again, I'm not set up. Just turn on the record. But I'm push the record button and then I realize, oh wait, I'm not even set up. <laughs> I just start thinking, I guess, when I start creating or getting creative in my brain. I start to think, I wonder what my viewers would think. Um, not that I... Not to say that I am scared uh, of what you guys will think, but I'm just excited to be able to wonder what you guys will, how you, what you guys will be inspired to do from it. One, and I'm getting tongue twisted. Too many thoughts in my head. Positive thoughts. Um, creative thoughts. And see, I lost my train of thought. So what I do have set up is paper from um, from Lori and dies that Lori sent me, and my machine that my hubby and my kids got me for my 39th birthday, and we're gonna use that. I am itching to do some jewelry and that's my forte anyways I love doing making jewelry doing jewelry designing my own jewelry let's see sorry for the yawning I'm doing a cleanse right now I didn't open the shop today because I haven't been able to use the restroom the right way for two days and that's not normal for me at all so I'm doing um, a cleanse with uh, some natural, a natural product that I'm very, very, very familiar with, and it always works. So instead of taking the pills that the doctor wants me to take, which are stool softeners and this and that, there's like uh, eight pills. No, no thanks. So I did some research about a year and a half ago, or two years, so probably two years back. And I found these pills, and they only cost like $3. And they are wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful pills. It took When I first started taking them, it took me 19 hours for them to kick in. Now it only takes about 4 hours. The big difference, because now I'm cleansed. But every once in a while, every few months... Mm, I think it's like every six months maybe now or no no it feels like six months but it's like every three months I'll pop one in and I've popped two of them in today one last night and one this morning so there was no way I can open the shop because I'm running back and forth to the restroom anyways a little TMI right <laughs> okay so how did we get from in being inspired to do jewelry to colon cleanse not colon cleanse <laughs> just a cleanse <sighs> let's see don't know hmm oh that's what it is that's what started it my thoughts so since I'm home and I've been home I have a list on my cable on my what is that called my cable, my TV, where I keep list, where I keep a recorded session of certain things. I don't watch TV daily. I might be able to get maybe two hours of TV a month in. I don't mind because I'm not, not a big TV watcher. I'm not a big movie watcher. But I am a big YouTube watcher. <laughs> okay. What's my point? Oh. Oh. So on my list, I have Junk Gypsies. Have you guys watched Junk Gypsies? Holy moly, been watching them. Been supporting their channel for two years now, I think they've been out. Love, love, love Junk Gypsies. I might as well do this while I chat, right? But anyways, before I continue chatting, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to make some jewelry pieces from, from these cutouts. I really never used dies um, before. This will be my first time. 
I've used embossing because I do have one or two or three embossing plates and because of Lori I have the dies now or these dies and so I'm gonna give these a go anyways I've never really used my own rolled out dies in jewelry so we'll see how this goes I don't have my chain set out I don't have my tools set out and remember ladies if you follow me you already know by now but if you're new to my channel I don't edit everything is um, real time and my video camera decides when it wants to separate my videos and that's how I end up with parts and I'm fine with it I don't know how many times I need to run this thing through I probably need that mat that everybody uses it's like a cushiony mat anyways junk gypsies I love watching junk gypsies they have they scream my style. I'm a junker, but um, they're but a, I have beautiful junk. None of my junk stays junk. I end up painting it, sanding it, breaking it, turning it into something else. How many times am I supposed to run this thing through? Probably twice, but it's kind of like um, soothing, so I continue doing it. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. I would love, 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 love to um, collect some more of these die cutting pieces. Very unique ones. Who. Let's see. Um, I have a leather piece. Let's see. Oh, I think that's going to be the word throughout the whole video. Let's see. Sometimes it's um. And today seems to be let's see. I think let's see will be okay because I don't know. I don't have too much of a thought in my head. All I know is that we're going to intrigate, intrigate, intrigate. When I think about the word, it just doesn't sound right. These pieces into a jewelry piece. And to think that the paper is sent from another artist to me is even better. Look at all these gorgeous colors. And the fact that it's double-sided, so if my necklace flips, because it is going to be a necklace, if it flips, that's okay. Or if I'm wearing something that goes with one side more than the other, I can just flip my piece around, my necklace around, and wear that side. Oh, and then look at this nice paper. Beautiful. I'm hoping, 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 hoping that I am going to follow through completely. Huh, for some reason it didn't cut down here. Is it not supposed to? Oh, I guess not. There's nothing to cut it down there. So I think I was supposed to bring it down further. Oh, it's probably one of those border punches. I see. So it's supposed to bring it down further, that way it pops out on its own. I'm wondering if I could still do that without making it look a mess. Let's try it. I'm new to this. Had no clue I had to bring that all the way down. So that's what we're going to do. Bring it down. Unless I'm still wrong, but that's what I'm going to do, is bring it down. Uh, we'll figure that out right now.
I guess not either. Or either. Or either. Or either. Hmm. How's this supposed to work then? Well, I can cut it myself. Let's do that. Scissors, ¿a dónde estás? ¿A dónde estás, scissors? And there you go. And that's a cool piece right there, too. I'm going to take that out just in case I want to use that. What's going on, me, Pinini? You protecting mom? Good girl. So I'm pushing these little things out, and I should probably. have a tool to push them out. There we go, I see something. So anyways, junk gypsies, if you got, oh how cute if you just keep that like that. Oh I like that. I wonder if that's what it's supposed to do. Hmm. Adorable. If you guys haven't watched Junk Gypsies, look it up on your um, cable. I, I'm assuming everybody has to have cable because, yeah, I think everybody should have cable. Even if you can't afford it, I think you have to have it or you have to have one of those converter boxes. Otherwise, you can't even watch regular TV. I think that sucks. That, w that took some time to get used to um, not having the right to be able to watch your regular TV when you, like when we were kids channel what was it channel 2 through 13 and then sometimes channel 28 uh, PBS and KTLA uh, that's for here in Los Angeles I don't know if it's everywhere else but I really felt um, violated when we were told that either we had to get cable or we had to purchase a converter box in order to even get regular channels. That's not cool. Not everybody could afford cable. Why should we have to buy a converter box? Really? We're already supporting TV shows by watching them they're entertaining us and keeping us company and to have to do that I didn't think was cool at all but I guess it's the normal now you have cable you have cable right that's what people say you have to have cable okay well sometimes our cable gets shut off no big deal we'll find something else to do anyways um so, I have junk gypsies on my recorded list. I adore those gals. And today they did something that I've always done. And I have a few that I need to mess with. And they gave me a good idea, except for I'm going to have to put a twist on it because I'm assuming that the feathers that they used on, I should probably say what it was. So they went to a flea market that they've been to before and they purchased you know a few things although I think that I would probably get them cheaper than they get them they don't haggle much and they know they don't haggle but I would haggle anyways on their way out from the flea market they found in the trash bin that belonged to the flea market they found some lampshades are we done with this one? and they they just stopped and they asked if they can have the lampshades and they said sure and they got the lampshades they went back these are cute little things right there that came out 
and they took the lampshades and then they got some big wide feathers like this big white all white gorgeous white feathers they spray painted some gold at the tips and then they sprinkled some glitter and then they hung the feathers from the frame of the lamps that they found and I have a lot of uh, I see a lot but it's only one or two I think it's only two bird cages it's a lot to me because it's plenty two is plenty and I have maybe two lampshades that are bald that I picked up on the side of the road of the road and that gives me a good idea one is already started with scraps of fabric and the other one I want to do with the feathers but I'm gonna to have to alter it because I can imagine how expensive those feathers are and I would if I'm gonna do a lamp um, I just said the word too a lampshade that just shows the metal with no fabric, no nothing on it. I will I really would like to use real feathers. Not the faux feather bag that you purchase at Michael's. Although I can probably get away with it. Hmm. Possibility. Anyways, what we're gonna do right now is pull out these little plastic things I save. I save these from products. And I'm gonna put that down. And then we're going to add some glossy accents. And where the holes are going to go to connect the chain to really doesn't matter right now because I can always add the holes later. And if I'm going to use the whole piece, I don't know right now, but I'm going to glossy accent the whole Thing because I can still cut it with some uh, metal shears after it's done curing. So it's definitely going to be quite a few parts to this video because um, we have to take into consideration the drying and glossy accents for me Personally, I like to leave it for 24 hours to make sure, make sure, make sure it's totally, totally, totally uh, cured. This paper is amazing. We make jelly prints, us ladies that are into this jelly printing addiction. Or shall I say, I'm into jelly printing and I'm pretty addicted right now. The things that we can create, the cutouts, uh, Gina Ahrens also she did this napkin collage and she's used Christmas Halloween and personally I'll be honest uh, those napkins are those napkins not just those but any napkins when it's not the season for it they kind of look tacky right you're kind of like, oh, kind of sick of seeing the Halloween napkins. But people like Gina and myself and other artists, we can turn those napkins into other art. And that's exactly what she did. Once she was done making her borders, you couldn't even tell. And I was not surprised. She's great at what she does. Uh, you can't even tell that they were Christmas themed or Halloween themed or anything so um, these pieces become wonderful pieces once we turn them into other things like for instance this backdrop it looks very colorful yes but it's a lot to take in like you wouldn't just frame this and put this up on your living room but pieces of it you would uh, Lori Haley Richardson has a series of uh, cutout papers that we decoupaged onto a canvas and I say we because she was inspired by me 
And now she's inspired me to cut mine up. At least one because I have, oh boy, I have like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 100 sheets of those cutouts. Not only of punched out paper, but I actually do, when I'm doing cutting fabric, while I'm cutting fabric, I'm letting the fabric pieces either fall in a basket that's in between my legs on the floor. And when I'm done, or in the middle, or I just get bored of making the flower, I'll grab the cutouts, I'll glue a piece of paper over there at the shop, and I'll lay my cutout fabric. And I have a sheet, or two, or three, or four, or five, or a hundred of pieces of fabric just laid on top of each other, on top of anything. And I'm looking right now to see if I see anything. Most likely it's at the shop, but I know that I started another one here. Let's see. Here we go. That's a piece of paper, right? Came off of the, my back um, drop that's underneath this one. A piece ripped off. I'm not going to toss it, so I quickly glued it right here. And then eventually I'll find another piece and glue it there, and another one there, and another one there. And we end up with beautiful pieces of art that we cut up. As a matter of fact, these little tiny pieces that are here, when we're done, I um, will glue them onto this. And they won't go in the trash. Usually, you know, people will scoot it, you know, into their hand and throw it into the bin. Not I. Mm -mm. That adds a little texture that not you can't just go buy that paper at a store with that special texture. Nope. Where was I anyways? Hmm. I'll remember. Oh, maybe I was at this paper, how pretty this paper is. Um, I know we were at something about jelly addiction. This will get pretty thick. And what I think I want to do, well, no, not right now. I'm just going to completely cure these and these are going to be beautiful. Once I add a hole, I add charms and then I'm going to um, maybe even add some dictionary paper. My Jewelry, when I make my jewelry, is reminds me so much of mixed media. Um, I use junk. I use trash. I use, not trash trash, but just junk. And I come out with the most prettiest pieces and original. Nobody in the world would have one. The technique is easy, you know, you go purchase this. Well, not the technique. Well, maybe. We'll see. Because I, I have no clue where we're heading. Anybody can go purchase this, right? And hopefully you guys do have some or go purchase it. And you can do the same thing and follow along with what I'm doing. And you might have these dies. So you can do that also, or purchase the dies and you could do that also. But nobody will ever have the same printed paper as I, or as this one. One, because it was made from an artist, and it's one of a kind. We cannot uh, repeat each other's techniques exactly to get the same paper. 
the markings and everything will be different always, even to myself. I can never repeat the same markings. I like that. One of a kind original. So, my point is, I will always, always, always have an original piece of jewelry when I make them. And tomorrow I'm hoping to share with you guys all of my um, one-of-a-kind pieces that I have made throughout the years. Pieces that I didn't sell, um, not because they didn't sell, but also because um, the economy was down really bad when I was doing markets and two uh, maybe I did ask for quite a bit on my pieces but it's because like I said they are they're original and I always told my husband and my husband um, has always agreed with me is if somebody really wants it and is going to appreciate it and they're not going to just purchase it for 19 or 20 bucks like they do when they purchase jewelry from uh, Forever 21 or Charlotte Russe or The Gap or wherever it is that they're going to purchase jewelry in order to make sure that they're not just going to purchase my jewelry and throw it in the closet or throw it into the trash eventually I have to put the value up on my pieces meaning the, the amount of money that they pay because they are valuable to me so if they're valuable to me and they took time to make and they are one of a kind original pieces and nobody else will have the same piece that, that they that I have or that I'm selling I think that the value should go up so I did have very expensive pieces and people that did want uh, to pay the price, I knew for a fact either they were an artist themselves or they just appreciated my art. And when I was doing the fancier places like uh, West Hollywood, I would sell very well. I would sell like um, two pieces every hour. And just with two pieces I would make, depending on the pieces, uh, two pairs of earrings, I would make almost 80 bucks. Um, rings, it depend on which ring. So, it depend on what location and where I was selling. West Hollywood, I did very well. Um, Beverly Hills, I did a gallery in Beverly Hills. And as a matter of fact, the lady, the owner, asked me to con leave my stuff for consignment because she loved my stuff and she wanted her store or a piece of her store full of my inventory. And I did really well there. Very well. One of a kind pieces. Nothing was duplicated. Uh, the only problem was is it, mm, it's very hard for an artist. I'm a store owner and an artist and uh, that's why when I offer a piece of my store like just a little tiny section of my counter when I offer that to an artist I usually only take a buck or two the rest can go to them because when I was doing consignment 